In the comment section of last week's air powered car video, you guys explained to me that having parallel steering geometry will cause tyre scrubbing when turning. As an aerospace engineer, and having never designed a car before, this was completely new to me, but luckily it was an easy fix. For the rear axle, I chose to use the same 608 ceramic hybrid bearings as used in the air engine. Now because the inside diameter of these bearings are about 7.95 millimeters, I struggled to find a suitable rear axle. So I chose to use a brass tube with an outside diameter of six millimeters and 3D printed some spacers to fit inside the bearings. But first I must mount the driven gear. The driven gear is 80 millimeters in diameter and has 100 teeth, which required it to be printed on my Cossel Mini Delta 3D printer with a 0.2 millimeter nozzle to get the required tooth definition. I 3D printed the wheels from regular PLA filament supplied from my sponsor, 3D Prints UK. I chose this over using regular radio control car wheels to keep the weight and rolling resistance low. The engine was mounted using slots so that the gear ratio could be adjusted, as well as the gear tooth mesh. The drive gear had 25 teeth, giving an engine to rear axle gear ratio of four to one. But it wasn't that simple. I did run into some issues when printing the gears, even using the 0.2 millimeter nozzle. As you can see here, the tooth definition is pretty terrible, despite the design following a correct tooth shape. Not only that, but the larger driven gear didn't have a constant radius, causing issues with the teeth meshing. So I swapped out the five spoke gear for a solid gear design with low infill and deeper tooth pattern. This design had a better mesh, but it also had some warping issues, which I fixed with a heat gun and some patience. and then clamped it to the rear axle using two bolts. Because PLA is a relatively hard plastic, it doesn't offer enough grip required for a tire. So using an old bike inner tube, I attached a strip of rubber to the rim using some glue. Whilst the glue was drying, it was time to mount the front wheels. Because the front wheels weren't driven, the bearings could be mounted inside the hubs and then bolted straight into the steering mechanism. I then mounted the rear wheels using the same clamping technique as the large gear, reattached the engine and then headed out for a quick test. Because I hadn't mounted all of the radio control gear, I decided to test it at only 30 psi. and it looked pretty promising. It was time to build a throttle and I realized I could simply squeeze the hose to restrict the airflow, which removed the need for a complex diaphragm valve as I designed in a previous video. So using a very basic lever mechanism, I was able to reduce the cross-sectional area of the tube and therefore adjust the RPM of the engine. Then a radio controlled servo was added and using a very basic push rod, I was able to control the throttle. It was then just a case of shortening the tubing and mounting the plastic bottle. I gave it a small kick just to test the steering and then proceeded to pump it up to 50 psi.
and nothing. And again, pretty terrible. Okay, a bit better, but I could still have pushed it further. So what's really happening here? Basically the car won't run at higher pressures, and this test shows it pretty well. The first few pushes go nowhere. And then it suddenly gets going. But just ignore the fact that I scrubbed off all the speed in the corner. This time I pumped it up to only 35 psi and it worked a lot better. So what's really happening here? Well, it's all to do with the gear ratio and the air inlet valve inside of the engine. It seems as though the engine is lacking in torque. So the obvious thing to do is to increase the gear ratio by either decreasing the diameter of the drive gear or increasing the diameter of the driven gear. The only issue with this is that in order to open the inlet valve inside of the engine, a torque is produced by the engine in the opposite direction. And it is the job of the flywheel to overcome this and open the valve. Now, because the wheels and essentially the forward momentum of the car are the flywheel in this case, increasing the gear ratio reduces the effectiveness of the flywheel, therefore only allowing the engine to run at even lower pressures. So let's try to sum this up. For the car to run at higher pressures, the engine requires more energy from the flywheel to open the inlet valve. This could be done by either adding more mass to the flywheel or spinning it faster. To achieve this, the engine needs to produce more torque which can be done by increasing the gear ratio. However, this reduces the torque in the other direction from the flywheel to the engine, basically reducing the flywheel effectiveness. So the gear ratio must be reduced to increase the effectiveness of the flywheel. But the problem with this is it decreases the torque produced at the rear wheels by the engine. So the only other way to increase the torque output from the engine is to increase the pressure. And we're back to square one. So that's the conundrum that I've run into when testing this air powered car. I think the only way to fix this car is to completely redesign the engine, either by increasing the volume of the cylinder inside the engine uh, so that the energy transfer to the flywheel is greater than the energy required back to open the ball valve, or to completely change the valve system and move to a rotary valve or a valve that will spin and let air in and out. The only issue with that is that I'll probably run into issues of trying to seal it properly because it's quite hard to have something spin uh, smoothly without air leaking out the sides. So that pretty much does it for this week's video. Uh, if you enjoyed the video please give a thumbs up, if you're new to my channel please click subscribe and a huge huge thanks to all of my patrons for supporting me. You guys seriously make these weekly videos possible and if you're not supporting me on Patreon and you wish to or you want to see any behind the scenes information, uh, bonus footage etc then check out my Patreon link down in the description below. Next week I have a pretty cool piece of manufacturing equipment to add to my workshop and uh, I'm really excited to uh, get it working and show you guys. So uh, thanks once again for watching and I'll see you next week. Goodbye.